الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز من القرآن من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز من القرآن Whoever kills a soul, unless for a soul or for corruption done in the land, it is as if he had slain all of mankind. And whoever saves one soul, it is as if he saved all of mankind. So why am I mentioning this verse? I'm mentioning this verse because of the next hadith that I'm about to mention, inshallah. And it is a long hadith. We all know the story, but I'd like to read it word for word, inshallah. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri mentioned, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, there was, a man, there was a man among a nation before you who killed 99 men, or 99 people, and then made an inquiry about the most learned person on earth. So he was directed to a monk. He was directed to a monk. He came to this monk and he said to him, I have killed 99 people. Is there room for me? Or is there a chance for me to repent or go come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The monk replied in the negative. He said, no. You killed 99 men. How do you expect to be forgiven? So this man said, if that's the case, he ended up killing the monk as well and made it 100 men. So now he has killed a hundred people. But he still had this urge inside of him that he still wanted to repent. He still wanted to seek forgiveness. So he continued to inquire about someone he can go, a learned person he can go in and ask about this question. So he was directed to a scholar. He was directed to a scholar. And he went to the scholar and he said, I have killed a hundred people. Is there room for me to repent? or to ask for forgiveness. And the scholar replied in the affirmative. He said, yes, of course you can be forgiven. Of course you can be forgiven. And he gave him a solution. He asked him, who, who stands between you and repentance? Go to such and such land, go to such and such land where they are righteous people and start worshiping your Lord so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can accept you and um, accept your repentance. And do not come back to this land of yours that you're currently in. Do not come back to this situation that you're currently in that makes it easier for you to do such and such murders. So this man liked this answer and he started on his travel to this other town where the righteous people are. Halfway there, he passed away. Halfway to the new town, he passed away. So immediately, the angels of torment descended down, and they wanted to take this soul and to start punishing him. At the same time, the angels of mercy came down, and they wanted to take his soul to have mercy on him. And they got in a little discussion. They got in a little discussion. So the angels, angels of mercy, they pleaded and they said, this man, he came repenting, he came with a repenting heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the response of the angels of punishment, they argued, but this man never did one good or one virtuous deed in his life. Not one. How do you expect us to have mercy on him? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sent another angel in the form of a human being to be an arbiter before them. And they agreed. 
So this angel in the form of the human being, he said, let's measure the distance that he was from his old town to where he is now, where he passed away, and the distance where he passed away to the new town. If he's closer to the new town, then the angels of mercy will take him. And if he's closer to the older town, then the angels of punishment. So after they measured, they realized that he was closer, closer to the new town, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels of mercy collected his soul, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his repentance. And another narration is that he actually was closer to the older town, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it seem that he was closer to the new town because he wanted to accept his repentance. So I just mentioned the first verse that, <coughs> excuse me, that whoever kills a soul, it's as if they killed the entire mankind. This is a major sin. It's a huge sin. This man killed a hundred souls. Imagine. And he had not done one good deed in his life or not one good virtuous act in his life. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy upon him because he, because he had this intention to return or to ask for forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he did not enter paradise because of any good deeds he did. He didn't have any. It's solely on the grace and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how pleasing it is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we turn back to him. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith, Allah is more delighted with the repentance of his servant than one of you would be who suddenly finds his camel laden with supplies after losing it in a barren land. So if you're traveling in a desert and you have your, your camel with all these equipment and the water and the food and all your provisions, it gets lost. And you're stuck in the middle of the desert. And you give up hope. And then all of a sudden, after you're thinking you're going to die of starvation or die of thirst, your camel shows up with all the equipment. And just imagine, imagine the hope and the happiness and the delight that you may feel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels, feels more hope than this of the slave or the servant that turns back to him in repentance. So he wants us to come back to him. And, Allah, and the Prophet sallallahu also said, if you did not commit sins, if you did not commit sins, Allah would sweep you out of this earth, or he would replace you as a people, as a, as a creation. He would get rid of all of us and replace us by another people who would commit the sins and then ask for Allah's forgiveness and he would forgive them. So what does this mean? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he does not expect us to be perfect. He, wa he knows this is our nature that we're going to fall into error. But what he's looking for is that we return back to him and we ask him his forgiveness. <clears throat> with that, brothers and sisters, I'd like to begin with a, a hadith Qudsi. And I'd like to get into the details of this, specifically on the topic of forgiveness. On the topic of forgiveness. عن أنس رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قال الله تبارك وتعالى يا ابن آدم إنك ما دعوتني ورجوتني غفرت لك على ما كان منك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم لو بلغت ذنوبك عنان السماء ثم استغفرتني غفرت لك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم إنك لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا لأتيتك بقرابها مغفرة رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح This is a hadith qudsi meaning this is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he gave it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And the authority of Anas may Allah be pleased with him who said I heard the messenger of Allah blessings of Allah and peace be upon him say Allah the blessed the most high said, O son of Adam, meaning he is addressing every single human being. O son of Adam, as long as you call upon me and put your hope in me, I have forgiven you for what you have done and I do not mind. As long as we come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we put our hope in him and we ask of him, he will forgive us and he does not mind. O son of Adam, if your sins were to reach the clouds of the sky, and then you would seek my forgiveness, I would forgive you. O son of Adam, 
If you were to come to me with sins that are close to filling the earth, and you would then meet me without ascribing any partners with me, I would certainly also bring to you forgiveness close to the filling of the earth. This is recorded by Tirmidhi, and it is said is a Hassan Sahih Hadith. So what does this mean, brothers and sisters? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have forgiven you for what you have done, and I do not mind. Well, let's turn to the verses of the Quran and see if we can make sense more about this, if we can clarify these points. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O oh my servants, who have transgressed against their own souls, despair not of the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is oft forgiving, most merciful. And this forgiveness, brothers and sisters, is the result of us turning to him and supplicating to him and asking him to forgive our sins. If our sins were to reach the clouds, so no matter how many sins we've done, even if we have killed a hundred men, if we sincerely want to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I use the example of the hundred men because these are major sins. This is a major sin. If we've committed a hundred major sins, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will still forgive us if we want Him to forgive us. If we want Him to forgive us. Then you would seek my forgiveness, I would forgive you. Here the word, we want to talk a little bit about the, the Arabic word of forgiveness, which is istighfar, that's used in here. And it's derived from the word ghafara. And the root implies the clothing that one wears to protect themselves from dirt, filth, or harm. So for example, a warrior or some a soldier who's in battle, they would wear a helmet called a mirfar, which is from the same root word as ghafara, on his head. In order to protect his head from spheres or bullets or whatever they may be. So the mirfar comes from the same word, root word of ghafara or istighfar or asking forgiveness. So it's a clothing or it's a way to protect your head and protect your body. In the same meaning, forgiveness in the Islamic sense means that Allah covers one's faults, removes one's sins and does not punish them in the hereafter. So when we seek this istighfar, when we seek this forgiveness, it's really we're seeking the protection from any punishment. That means we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to erase these things and protect us from our own souls and our own evil deeds. One of the most important things that a person can do, brothers and sisters, is to ask for guidance. This is one of the most important things in our creed is we ask for guidance constantly in anything that we do, in all the affairs that we do, in our work, worldly life, in the work, in our stu studying, education, in our family life, in everything that we do, we always ask for guidance for Allah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us what's best. And of course to show us the straight path. And the second most important thing is that we ask for forgiveness for the sins and the related matters so that we can, we can avoid the hellfire and enter into paradise by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, when one of us, when we commit a sin, and yet we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely in repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees us it will be forgiven. He will forgive our sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمَ نَفْسَهُ ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهِ يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and whoever does a wrong or wrongs himself, but then seeks forgiveness from Allah, he will find Allah forgiving and merciful. He will always find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiving and merciful. And the Prophet sallallahu said in a beautiful hadith, أَذْنَبَ عَبْدٌ ذَنْبًا فَقَالَ اللَّهُمَّ اغْفِرْ لِي ذَنْبِي فَقَالَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى أَذْنَبَ عَبْدِي ذَنْبًا فَعَلِمَ أَنَّ لَهُ رَبًّا يَغْفِرِ الذَّنْبِ 
ويأخذ بالذنب ثم عاد فأذنب فقال أي ربي اغفر لي ذنبي فقال تبارك وتعالى عبد أذنب ذنبا فعلم أن له ربا يغفر الذنب ويأخذ بالذنب ثم عاد فأذنب فقال أي ربي اغفر لي ذنبي فقال تبارك وتعالى أذنب عبدي ذنبا فعلم أن له ربا يغفر الذنب ويأخذ بالذنب اعمل ما شئت فقد غفرت لك غفرت لك This is a beautiful hadith where a slave committed a sin and said O oh Lord I have committed a sin so forgive me the Lord said my slave knows he has a Lord who forgives sins therefore I have forgiven my slave then he committed another sin and said, O oh Lord, I have committed another sin, so forgive me. His Lord says, My slave knows he has a Lord who forgives sins, therefore I have forgiven him. And on the third or fourth occurrence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he may, he may do whatever he wishes. This is recorded in Bukhari and Muslim. So as long as we feel this remorse in our hearts, brothers and sisters, and we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will forgive our sins. As long as we want him to forgive our sins, he will forgive our sins. This is the great forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his pleasure in his servants when they seek his forgiveness. He wants to reward us. He wants to give us of his blessings. And out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He gives us time. He gives us time to turn back to Him. As long as, brothers and sisters, we have a soul, this is a sign of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a sign of His grace. This is a sign of Him wanting good for us. As long as we have a soul, that means we still have a chance to turn back to Him. Once the angels of death come to take our soul away, it's too late. It's too late. Kind of like Fir'aun or Pharaoh. Musa alayhi salam, Moses, he preached to him and he told him, stop doing what you're doing. It's wrong, stop doing it. And, and Pharaoh knew this. Fir'aun knew this. Yet he had arrogance in his heart. Up until he started crossing the sea and Musa and his people Bani Israel, the children of Israel, crossed over the sea safely, and now there's Fir'aun and all his soldiers in hot pursuit. He sees the waves starting to collapse on him. And he, he says, Now I believe in the Lord of Moses. This is what Pharaoh says. Now I believe in the Lord of Moses. It's too late then. You know you're, it's over. It's too late. As long as we have a soul, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a chance to repent and this is His mercy. So we all commit sins and we all do wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always waiting for us and giving us a chance to repent and to seek His forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in the Quran, وَلَوْ يُؤَاخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِمَا كَسَبُوا مَا تَرَكْ عَلَى ظَهْرِهَا مِنْ دَابَّةِ وَلَكِنْ يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِعِبَادِهِ, بعباده بَصِيرًا And if Allah were to punish men for what they have earned, if He was going to hold us accountable for every single thing that we do, He would not leave upon it or this earth any creature. If He was going to be fair with us relatively to, relative to the human justice if you will because of our own sins if he was going to treat us like human beings we would all be annihilated because of all the sins and all the wrongdoings that we do to ourselves and to each other however out of his mercy and love he does not treat us this way he does not treat us the way we treat him he does not treat us the way we treat him but he defers them to a specified term and then when their time comes, then indeed Allah has ever been watching over his servants. And even in this verse, he doesn't say, and then he will punish them. He said, I've been watching. And his justice will prevail. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive our sins is something that a believer should never forget. 
See, brothers and sisters, the shaitan or Satan, he wants us to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. He wants us to give up. He wants, to isolate, wants us to isolate ourselves. And once we're isolated, we have no hope. And he continues to tell us, Satan tells us, you're the worst person in the world. There's no hope. Nobody will look at you. Why should you go to these, hang out with these people? You're nothing. If only these people knew what you're doing. And he convinces us. Satan convinces us that we're the worst of the people. To the point where many people around these, around these days, Muslims and non-Muslims, they fall into despair. They have no more hope. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa to protect us from this. They end up committing suicide. And this is what the devil wants us to do. This is what Satan wants us to do. To despair. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, do not despair in his mercy. Always struggle against our own souls. And we should always struggle against the, the, the whispers of the shaitan or Satan and the devil. And we always come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how many sins that we do, we will always find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for us. And waiting to give us his mercy and waiting to forgive our sins. Most human beings, brothers and sisters, and this is why this hadith is directed to mankind. It's not directed to Muslims. It's not directed to believers. It's not directed to muhsineen, as Brother Qusay mentioned earlier, those who are constantly trying to achieve perfection. It's not directed to any specific type of person. It's directed to every single human being. O oh, son of Adam, we're all descendants of Adam. No matter what we worship, no matter what creed we're following, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, no matter who you are, as long as you come back to me, I will forgive you. And we commit sins, brothers and sisters, on a continual basis. Therefore, just as we commit the sins on a continual or regular basis, we should constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us on a continual and regular basis. We can't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for too much forgiveness. It's just no much. You can, you're not going to say too much. He's not going to get sick of us. He loves it when we come back to him. And he's not going to be like another human being. If I go to such and such person and I keep asking him and I keep asking him, maybe this person is the most generous person in the world. He may give me the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time. But as a human being, it's human nature for us to get sick. Like, okay, that's enough. After the third time, it's enough. Don't ask me anymore. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like human beings. He loves it and he never gets tired of us coming back to him and asking him. And the Prophet ﷺ, he gave us the example and he said, By Allah, I certainly ask Allah for forgiveness and repent to him more than 70 times a day. This is the Prophet, peace be upon him. He has given us an example. He's saying, I ask forgiveness and I repent to him more than 70 times a day. And another narration, 100 times a day. He's constantly asking for forgiveness for the things that he's done, he, for the things that he knows and things that he doesn't know. So he's teaching us. We may know that we hurt somebody. We may know that we're hurting ourselves. But at the same time, we have, may not have no clue that we're hurting somebody. And we may have no clue that we're hurting ourselves. Therefore, we always ask for forgiveness for the things we know and the things that we don't know. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَغْفِرُ الله إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ And seek Allah's forgiveness, certainly Allah is forgiving, most merciful. So this is actually also a command by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He wants us to always ask Him for forgiveness. He wants us to do this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا اللَّهِ إِنَّنِي لَكُمْ مِنْهُ نَذِيرٌ وَبَشِيرٌ وَأَنِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ The Messenger says, do not worship except Allah. Indeed, I am sent to you from him as a person who warns and one who brings glad tidings. And seek forgiveness from your Lord and repent to him. So this is something we're encouraged to do. Whether we think we're committing sins or whether we don't think we're committing sins, we're encouraged to always ask him for, our forgiveness, for forgiveness and his mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, He commends those who seek forgiveness and says, قُلْ أَوْنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ مِّنْ ذَلِكُمْ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَأَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ 
الصابرين والصادقين والقانتين والمنفقين والمستغفرين بالأسحار Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a characteristics and he gives us a, a, a he informs us of something he says in the Quran say shall I not inform you of things far better than those things of this world for the pious there are gardens within their Lord with their Lord wherein rivers flow Therein is their eternal home, and for them are pure spouses. And Allah will be pleased with them, and Allah is all seer of the slaves. Those who say, Our Lord, we have indeed believed, so forgive us our sins and save us from the punishment of the fire. They are those who are patient, those who are true and obedient with sincere devotion and worship to Allah, those who spend in charity and those who pray and beg for Allah's forgiveness in the hour in the late hours of the night. These are the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes this characteristics in us. He likes it that we always ask Him. And He wants us to ask Him for the best. When we ask for paradise, He wants us to ask for the highest level of paradise. He doesn't want us to just ask to barely pass. He wants us to get an A+. Plus. And He wants us to always ask for the A+. Plus. To be amongst the prophets and the messengers and the righteous people in the levels, in the highest levels of paradise and not to be among the common folk who are in paradise. So this is what he wants us to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says for those who also committed sins وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يُصِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أُولَئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and those who when they have committed illicit acts or wrong themselves with evil remember Allah and ask forgiveness for their sins and who can forgive sins except Allah and they do not persist in that wrong that they were doing while they know it. For such the reward is forgiveness for, from their Lord and gardens which rivers flow, are flowing under, wherein they shall abide forever. How, how an excellent reward is the reward of the good doers or the doers of good. So even if somebody is committing illicit acts or fawahish, and they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sincere heart, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive their sins and will reward them for it. And He will reward them for it. So, this is just a brief explanation of the concept of forgiveness and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to turn to Him. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a rhetorical question in the Quran and he subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَهُ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ With all these things that we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to forgive he wants us to always ask him he's going to reward us and he always will reward us he will constantly reward us then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a verse will they not repent to Allah and ask his forgiveness for Allah is oft forgiving most merciful he is oft forgiving most merciful and he will constantly he will constantly be there for us if we go back to him if we go back to him and we put our trust in him in conclusion brothers and sisters i would like to mention this is the mercy that we see here and we ask allah subhanahu all the time for his mercy but see we cannot comprehend mercy to its, full, to its full extent. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He decreed that only 1% of His mercy be put on this earth. Only 1% of His mercy is here, and it's only 1% that we know about, and that we feel, and that we feel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu mentioned that Allah made mercy into 100 parts. 100 parts. He kept 99 parts with Himself, and sent one part down to earth. He sent only one part down to earth. From this, all the compassion and mercy in creation, even the horse lifting its hoof or lifting its leg, 
for fear of hurting its young. So what does this mean, brothers and sisters? That means that every single feeling of mercy that every single creation on earth has, whether it's an animal or a human being, or whether it's jinn or mankind, the mercy that a mother has for its child, the mercy that a brother has for its, his mother, the mercy that we have between, between the spouses, the mercy that an animal has for its young, all of these combined together on earth, of all the creatures, this is only 1% of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 99% of it, he left it for himself on the day of judgment for his grace and his mercy and to forgive us by his will and his grace and mercy. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all our sins and to shower us with his blessings and mercy and grace on the day when there is no shade except his shade. Jazakumullah khair for your attendance. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.